Hello and welcome to my review of Dante's Inferno on the Xbox 360, also available on the PS3. It seems that the global recession has caused a lot of games companies to tighten their reins recently, a trend I very much hope will be over soon. Rather than creating innovative new games, many developers are instead moving to milking an existing franchise, or creating games that draw heavily on previous successful titles. Bayonetta ripped off Devil May Cry, Darksiders ripped off the Nintendo 64 Legend of Zelda games, and now Dante's Inferno is apparently ripping off God of War, a game I've never played, so I can't really comment on that. This did mean, though, that I was able to get into Dante's Inferno with minimal preconceptions, something I'm very happy for. So, without further ado, let's take a look at the game. For those of you who don't know, Dante's Inferno is based on the Divine Comedy, a 12th century series of poems written by the poet Dante Alighieri. I say based on, but uh, that might be giving it too much credit. I don't believe that in the first few paragraphs of the Divine Comedy, a character named Dante proceeds to kill death and steal his sight. But the setting is still the same, so maybe it's better to say that it was inspired by it. Or it was a reboot of it. Yeah, reboots are popular in Vogue at the moment, we'll call it a reboot. Anyway, Dante is a crusader in the Holy Land who is killed by being stabbed in the back. After proceeding to kill death and take his scythe, Dante returns home to find a Muslim from Accra has murdered his family, including his fiancée Beatrice. After discovering that for some reason Beatrice's soul is now owned by Lucifer, Dante gives chase into the circles of hell to try and rescue her. I hear my word. Sorry Dante, the princess is in another circle. Sorry, sorry, couldn't resist. Anyway, it's all very hammy, and I was never really sure why Beatrice was taken by Lucifer in the first place. Uh, the manual says that her only sin was giving herself to Dante before wedlock. But I don't think that puts you right down to the ninth circle of hell, but then again I'm not really qualified to uh, discuss theology, so we won't look too deeply into that one. Anyway, it's all pretty hammy, but as a device to move the game along, it works, so you can't really ask more than that from an action game. There is a really interesting element though in that Dante has to face his own personal sins on each level of hell in a quest to get them absolved. Or maybe he just has to face them to uh, get to Beatrice. I don't really know. When it became apparent that the story had taken a backseat to this, I just really stopped paying attention and started focusing on killing demons. Which is pretty much what this game is all about. An unashamedly gore-drenched action game, Dante's Inferno revolves around tallying up huge combos with special moves and laying waste to the denizens of hell. Dante has two forms of attack, a scythe and a cross, the scythe being nicked from death in the first half hour of the game, and the cross being a keepsake from Beatrice. The cross provides long-range firepower, whereas the scythe is Dante's melee weapon throughout the entire game. Depending on how you play the game, if you choose to punish or absolve larger enemies and the various shades dotted all over hell, you can earn holy or unholy experience. Unholy makes your scythe more powerful, while holy levels up your cross. You also earn souls as you play through the game, which can be used to add extra effects and special powers to your weapons, ranging from just upping your health or mana, through to additional special moves, more powerful versions of your spells, and some devastating area of effect attacks. There are also many platforming sections and puzzles. None of these are very tough, but they do provide a welcome break from the endless destruction. And this does bring us to our first major problem with Dante's Inferno. The right stick is given up to the dodge mechanic, meaning that there is no camera control at all. You're using a fixed camera throughout the whole game. To the designer's credit, the camera does move, but the fact that you have no control over it means that you can only get so many angles. And when you're trying to make a jump, this can lead to some serious problems. You can't judge distance properly on a 2D display. Normally, in most games, this isn't a problem because you can just swing the camera around, look at it from several different angles, which lets you judge the distance more easily. Not so in Dante's Inferno. Again, the designers tried to keep this problem to a minimum by ensuring the camera was always at a decent angle, but there are lots of points in the games where this just doesn't work the greed level being one of the worst sections in the game for this. 
The second thing that I'd like to complain about are the quick time events. Ah, quick time events. I remember when I first met you. And it was hate at first sight. I loathe quick time events. They don't test your skill, they don't make for engaging gameplay, they always pop up during cinematic sequences which would be far better to just watch rather than simply sit there going, oh shit, oh shit, what am I going to have to press, what am I going to have to press, what am I going to have to press, and then trying to mash the button in time. Dante's Inferno even includes the worst species of quick time events, those ones where you just have to mash the same button repeatedly. That's not even testing your reaction time. What is the point in having this in a game? To make matters even worse, there's a quick time event for everything. There are quick time events to absolve people of their sins, there are quick time events to kill certain enemies, every boss will include at least one or two quick time events, there are random quick time events thrown in every so often into cinematic sequences that will kill you, there are quick time events to open chests, and there are quick time events to open doors. Why do you need a quick time event to open a goddamn door? It's a door! You should just be able to walk up to it and open it! Are we supposed to feel a sense of satisfaction by mashing a button until a door opens? At least the other quick time events give you a sense of victory that comes from killing an enemy or claiming a bucket of souls, but opening a door? In the words of the angry video game nerd, WHAT WERE THEY THINKING?! Okay, alright, I'm back. It has to be said, Dante's Inferno is a very pretty game. The circles of hell appear exactly as they are described in the Divine Comedy. The enemies look brilliant and every level has a very different aesthetic. The attacks also look fantastic, flashes and explosions left, right and centre, and this attack in particular always brings a smile to my face. You'll fall warm and fuzzy inside. And such dire laments issued forth as come only from those who are truly wretched, suffering, and forever lost. Okay, let's bring this to a close. Dante's Inferno is by no means a bad game. The fixed camera and the never-ending stream of quick time events get on my nerves to no end. Level design can really wind you up, especially given the fact that the game can be very stingy with health at times. The greed level in particular is very harsh. There are loads of platforming sections that require solid jumps, which are really difficult to judge without a moving camera. And the health is dispersed very erratically throughout the level. I don't think I've actually had to play through anything quite that frustrating since the water temple of uh, Ocarina of Time. And that was frustrating because it was hard, not because of some sloppy design work. But these flaws aside, Dante's Inferno has a very good mechanic at its heart, but limited replay value. If you really enjoy action games, it's worth a few quid, but I wouldn't pay the retail price for it. If, like me, action games aren't really your cup of tea, but you do enjoy one from time to time, Dante's Inferno will provide you with some entertainment, but wait a few months and pick it up second hand. If you generally don't like action games, then this is not going to be something that's going to get you into the genre, and it doesn't have much to offer to anyone else. Until next time, I'm Evis T, signing off. Woman saw it.